Section 1021 is titled Introduction to Chords, and we're going to answer the question, how far across is it? We're going to skip uh, question 48 and jump down to question 49, which is titled Parts of a Circle Part 1. A line segment that connects the endpoints of an arc is called a chord. Thus, segment AB in the diagramic at right is an example of a chord. So from here to here is a chord. One way to locate the center of a circle when given an arc is to fold it so that two parts of the arc coincide or lie on top of each other. If you fold AB so that point A lies on B, what is the relationship between the resulting crease and the chord AB? Explain how you know. Uh, if you fold it, you will have this crease right here that will be the perpendicular bisector of the chord, thus making AT equal or congruent to BT. They will match up to each other right there. All right, go ahead and skip part B and flip over to the top of page 11. Problems, or part C says in problem 48, the tree fragment forms the shorter arc between two endpoints. The shorter arc between points A and B is called the minor arc and is written with two letters, A, B, with a little arc over the top of them. The larger arc is called a major arc and is usually written with th using three points, such as arc A, X, B. What do you know about segment AB if the minor and major arcs are the same length? Explain how you know. So if they're the same length, then AB is going to be a diameter because it would cut the circle in half and that would also make it a semicircle. Question 50 says in problem 48, Folding the arc several times resulted in an intersection point that was the center of the circle. But how can you prove that a perpendicular line that bisects an arc or chord will pass through the center of the circle? To consider this, first assume that the perpendicular bisector does not pass through the center. According to the assumption, if the perpendicular bisector does not pass through the center, then the center C will be off the line in the circle as shown at right. Consider triangle ACD and triangle BCD. Are these two triangles congruent? Why or why not? So we're given that AD is congruent to BD and AC is gonna be congruent to BC because all the radii of a circle are congruent. So from the center here, if we connected here and here, those would be radius, radii, and they would be congruent to each other. And we know that CD is congruent to CD because of the reflexive property. So that's gonna give us the two triangles congruent by side, side, side. Go ahead and skip problem B, and you can go ahead and start on the review preview for section 10 to 1. 